Assalamu alaikum dear students. I hope you will be doing good. Today we are going to study geography. It's the lecture from the month of March. Uh, today we are going to study uh, chapter number 8, which is Plains and Rivers. It's uh, from page number 68 to 75 from your textbook. So the topics which we are going to study today are um, what is plain, what are plains like, grasslands, savannas, deserts, arctic tundra, river plains, Indus flood plain, locating plains on the world map, rivers, the upper course of a river, dams, the middle course of a river, the lower course of a river. Okay, so what is a plain? Uh, plains are large wide area of land that is flat. A plain might slope gently but never steeply. Okay, uh, look the land around you it's flat right so uh, if it slopes um, is the slope gentle or steep you have to um, observe this right so if it's a large wide area of the land that is flat or almost flat it is a plane and a plane might slope gently but never steeply so one of the world's largest planes is the Eurasian steppe and uh, what are steps Steps are a large area of flat, unfrosted grassland in southeastern Europe or Siberia. Steps are found in places with a temperate climate and very little rain. Um, temperate climates are those without extremes of temperature and precipitation. All right. Another a very uh, large plain region is the Great Plains of North America. So what are plains like? There are uh, different types of plain, each characterized by its unique features like climate, vegetation, and location. Some plains like Great Plains of North America are bounded on one side by mountains. Some are found along the bank of the rivers. Coastal plains are found along the coasts of continent, uh, continents. Okay, so um, first of all, you have to understand what are coast, what are continents, so that this point will be clear in your minds. Okay, coast is the part of the land near the sea, and um, continent is one of several very large land masses. Up to seven regions are commonly regarded as continents. Okay, these are include Asia, Africa, Europe. North America, South America, Australia, and Antarctica. So, moving towards grasslands. Grasslands receive enough rain for grasses to grow up about one meter high. Scattered trees grow in the wetter parts. The Eurasian steppe and the Great Plains of North America are grasslands. In North America, grasslands are called as prairies and the temperate grasslands of South America are called as pampas. The Serengeti Plains of Central Africa are called as savannas. Okay, so what are savannas? These are grassy plain in tropical and subtropical regions with few trees. Some of the most well-known savannas include the Serengeti Plains of Tanzania, the vast Acacia Plains of East Africa, and the Australian savannas. Savannas have grass, other small flowering plants, and few trees. There are also savannas in Australia and southern part of North America. For example, plains bison on the American prairie reserves in Montana, USA. These animals are also known as buffalo, 
you can see in this picture. Okay, so what are deserts? A desert is basically a barren or unfertile land whose surface is exposed to sunlight and it receives less precipitation, very less precipitation each year. Okay, so some things are deserts. Deserts are places that have less than 250 millimeters of rainfall per year. The weather in deserts is usually hot, but it becomes cool at night. Why is that so? Um, deserts are cold during the night because of the sand. Because sand cannot hold heat, it needs a constant source of energy to stay warm. Uh, that is by sun. So uh, since the sun is not present at night, so during the night, um, when the sun is not shining, the sand losses all its heat making the desert night cold okay so most deserts are located between the latitude of 20 degrees and 35 degrees north and south of the equator okay uh, for this point you need to understand first what is latitude and what um, is the uh, equator so uh, latitude is an angle which ranges from zero degree at the equator to 90 degrees at the poles and equator are uh, equator is a line nationally drawn on the earth equidistant from the poles dividing the earth into northern and southern hemisphere and uh, constituting the parallel of latitude zero degrees and latitude is used together with longitude to specify the precise location of features on the surface of the earth and longitude is measured by imaginary lines that run around the earth vertically, means up and down, and meet at the north and south poles. So the desert is flat, but as the climate is very dry, there is very little vegetation. Parts of the Thar Desert in Pakistan and the Sahara Desert in North Africa are plains. There are also deserts uh, plains in Australia. For example, a gravel plain of Sahara Desert in Libya. In this picture, you can see that. So, Arctic tundra. All right, plains where the ground is frozen are called Arctic tundra. The frozen ground is called permafrost. Basically, the plains where the ground is frozen are called tundra. Okay, it can be up to 450 meters thick. In the coldest tundra plains, the surface of soil remains frozen, and in the warmer uh, tundra plains, the surface thaws in the summer because of the temperature. As you know, that uh, temperature extremely rises in summer. That's the reason of uh, thawing of snow and um, um, ice. Tundra plains receive very little rain, but the water from melted ice form bogs and shallow lakes in the summer. Okay, um, what are bogs? It is an area of wet, muddy ground that is too soft to support a heavy body. And um, shallow lakes are defined as the lakes where the euphotic zone extends over the bottom. And euphotic zone is defined as the depth at which the light intensity of the photosynthetically active spectrum uh, equals 1% of the subsurface light intensity. Okay. Tundra plains receive very little rain, but the water from melted ice forms bogs and shallow lakes in the summer. Few trees grow on the tundra, but many small plants survive. For example, permafrost in an uh, arctic tundra plain in Alaska, USA. Here in this picture, you can see that. Okay, what are river plains? Um, basically, uh, geologic setting dominated by a river system are the river plains. And... Um, River plains may occur in any climatic settings, includes active channels, 
um, oxbow legs, short planes, etc. So many planes have rivers running across them. These are often called flood planes. Uh, the river flow slowly across the plains because the land slopes less steeply. Means slope is a surface of which one end or side is at higher level than another rising or falling surface. Okay, and uh, these surfaces are less sharp. Flood plains form along the banks of a river that has collected a large amount of water. For example, the Indus and Nile. These are the rivers, okay? Um, the river erodes its banks and leaves an area which is lower than the land around it. Most of the time, the river stays in its channel, but sometimes it floods, usually in rainy season. What are the river channels? Um, a channel is a type of a landform consisting of an, um, basically it's a land which holds the river. Okay. The flood water brings a huge amount of sediment to this land and after the flood recedes, means it moves back, the nutrient-rich sediments is left behind, thus making the soil fertile for irrigation purposes. For centuries, people have used the fertile land of floodplains for farming, such as that of the River Nile and River Indus. You can see that uh, it is an aerial view of um, Indus Plain. Aerial view is the view that is captured by a helicopter, right? From the air, basically. In modern times, people have built settlements on floodplains that face the threat of flooding. Okay. So now locating planes on the world map. Okay, uh, plains are regions with the lowest elevation at the map, okay, and the elevation, um, the elevations of a, a geographic location is its high, height above or below a fixed reference point, which is the standard point. That is uh, used to make comparisons and um, um, study purposes, okay. On this map, with the help of the uh, colored key, you can locate the different uh, tundra, savannas, deserts, and temperate grasslands. Okay, so the Indus is the longest river in Pakistan, 3,180 kilometers long. Its plains make up 20% of the total length of Pakistan. The upper course of a river the place where a river starts is called its source. Okay, um, floodplains have naturally attracted human settlements due to their proximity to water supplies, fertile soils, and flood landscape, which makes them attractive for building and constructions. Uh, as a result, a large proportion of the global population now lives on the river floodplains. Okay, uh, so uh, some river starts in a lake or glaciers. Glaciers are made up of fallen snow, but many rivers come from a spring on highland. And um, water springs, these are the natural source of water, okay? Uh, and it is formed when groundwater pushes uh, as way to surface through holes or weak places in the rock. Um, groundwater is the water present beneath Earth's surface in the soil. Okay, the spring becomes a stream as it flows downhill. Uh, the fast flowing water carries sediments. The water cuts a V-shaped valley and the valley is not straight because the stream changes direction if it 
uh, it comes to hard rock called a spur and um, uh, when there are lots of spur, uh, spurs um, they are called interlocking spurs this is the upper course of river where water flows fast hill all right as the indus flows away from its source four main rivers join it at different places these are called its uh, tributaries a river or a stream flowing into a larger river or lake and forms tributaries uh, these are known as jhelum chenab ravi and satlaj these rivers come from streams now uh, sorry, snow and glaciers in the Himalaya, Karakoram, and Hindu Kush mountains. Uh, the upper course of a river might have rapids, waterfalls, and gorge. Um, gorge is a narrow valley with steep, rocky walls located between hills or mountains. A gorge or canyon is a deep valley that has been cut by a river. The fast flowing water in the upper course of the river erodes soft rocks more quickly than hard rocks, creating rapids and waterfalls. Example is uh, the tiny spring in the Pennines uh, Mountains in the England is the source of South Tyne and the South Tyne is a tributary uh, of the River Tyne which is one of the longest river in England. Here you can see in the picture and uh, in the left uh, in this picture in the left side you can see the rapids on the upper course of the river uh, Vaito in Iceland and uh, the right side uh, you can see that Golden Falls a waterfall close to the rapids on the same river. Um, here's the map of the river Indus. I was talking about this picture previously and this you can see that um, and on the left side rapids on the upper course of the river Vaito in Iceland and um, uh, on the right side, you can see that Golden Falls, a waterfall, uh, uh, which is close to the rapids on the same river. Okay, and uh, this picture is the River Allen in the northeast England for this gorge, and River Allen is a tributary of South Tyne, as I have told you earlier. Okay, then. Dams, water dams. A dam is a barrier that stops or restricts the flow of water or underground streams. Reservoirs created by dams not only suppress floods but also provide water for activities such as irrigation, human consumption, industrial use, aquaculture, and uh, aquaculture. Okay. A dam is built across a river to control the flow of water during. Um, uh, the river Indus, um, some large dams can be seen. Um, the largest dam is the Tarbela Dam in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and uh, this is the largest earth filled dam in the world. It is 148 meters high. You can see that in this picture. Okay, and um, the reservoir at Tarbela holds 14.3 billion cubic meters of water. Engineers can let the water flow through the dam when it is needed. And uh, the dams are used for irrigation, irrigating farms. And irrigation is the application of controlled amount of water uh, to the plants so that plants can receive plenty of water and grow um, grow smoothly and its maximum generating hydroelectricity hydroelectricity is the electricity made by uh, generators that are pushed by the movement of water uh, it is usually made with them that block a river to make a reservoir or collect water that is pumped there when the water is released the pressure behind the dam forces the water down pipes that led to a turbine okay Okay, and a turbine is a machine for producing continuous power in which a wheel or a rotor typically fitted with mains is made up uh, is made to resolve by fast moving flow of water, steam, gas, air or other fluid. 
they basically a turbine is a big large wheel uh, which is made to revolve by a flow of uh, water steam or gas or air or other fluid okay turbines are used to um, generate electricity helping to control uh, river floods by storing water supply water for homes industry and agriculture providing important habitats for plants and animals the uh, river nile also has dams the aswan high dam was built so that engineers could control the river floods and like the indus the nile flood each year they can control the floods by letting the water through the dam whenever it is needed and it is located at the border between egypt and sudan then the middle course of a river the river flows across white flat land called flat plains by the time it has collected a lot of water from streams and other rivers that run into it so it flows with more energy the river cuts a deep wide channel and continues to flow within it where it meets high ground made of rock it flows round it thus making a bend in the river um the water on the outside of the bend flows faster than the rest and cuts a cliff on the river bank the bends in the river called meanders that grows bigger and the water meanders uh, these are basically a bend of a river or a road okay so the water carries rock and soil and deposits it farther downstream uh, on the opposite bank of the river it might form a sand or pebble beach there a meander can form a loop with a narrow neck when this happens the water can flow straight across the neck of the loop this cuts off the meander from the river the meander becomes an oxbow lake and uh, an oxbow lake is a u shaped lake that forms when a wide meander of a river is cut off creating a free standing body of water this landform is so named for its distinctive curve shape which resembles the bow pin of an oxbow in this diagram you can see the loops in the lake by the time the middle course of the river enters the river course it has collected a massive volume of water this is basically the satellite picture of river indus which was taken in 1992 and a channel of the river has cut across a meander you can see that okay so the river course of river uh the river channels at, at this stage is deep and wide and the land around it is quite flat uh on the coast um of the arabian sea the river indus uh, has a wide mouth it is spreads across a plain and it splits into several smaller rivers this is called a delta when a river um across a plain splits into several smaller rivers this is called a delta all right there is a question arises in our mind that why does a river form a delta instead of just flowing into the sea where the water has flowed a long way and collected the sediments so the in the upper uh, course of the river when the water carries the sediments on the land the river slows down in its lower course and um, at the mouth of the river the sea waves take the sediments to the ocean however if the river deposits sediments more quickly than the sea can take it away the sediments get heaped up
means that sediments are thrown together in a pile. Then consequently, the river splits up to flow around the heaps, around the pile of sediment, okay? The world's largest river, um, the Nile in the Egypt also has a delta and the mouth of the Nile is on the coast of Egypt on the Mediterranean Sea. Um, some river cuts a very wide mouth called an estuary. White mouth of a river is called an estuary where salty water is mixed with the um, um, uh, river water. Okay. Uh, this is the place where the fresh water of the river mixes with the salt water of the sea. Um, slow flowing water deposits sediments on the riverbed. You can see that in a picture. This is the satellite photo of the river course and the mouth of the river Nile. It's the map of the river Nile. Now, um, I believe that you people must have understood this lecture. Now it's time to write answers of the questions. Okay, you have to write all the answers in your uh, fair copy. Uh, question number one is what is a plane? Then what are planes like? Then explain Arctic tundra in detail. What are the uses of dams? Define the following terms. Meanders, delta, reservoir, estuary. What is the middle course of a river? What is the lower course of a river? And with the help of textbook, make 10 filling in blanks from the chapter. Uh, thanks for your patience and attention. Me, Miss Ubi Yusuf, signing off. Allah Hafiz.